Hello all and welcome to Navigating Insurance and Medical Nutrition. My name is Casey Childress. I'm the Executive Director of the Children's Medical Nutrition Alliance and your presenter today. Before we get into the meat of the subject matter, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about CMNUA. The Children's Medical Nutrition Alliance, CMNUA, is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that was developed out of the explicit need for a unified voice to empower, educate, assist, advocate for, and support all patients who require medical nutrition. CMNUA exists to provide an effective national coalition of parents, healthcare providers, advocacy groups, and corporations dedicated to a common overarching mission. So what do we do? Working together with healthcare providers, advocacy groups, and corporations, CMNUA strives to be a powerful force for positive change, directly improving the lives of thousands of patients and families and making medical nutrition more accessible and available. CMNUA provides direct support for families and children with medical nutrition needs. We raise awareness of the various medical conditions that require medical foods and educate about the pressing need for better medical access to foods. CMNUA identifies and eliminates barriers to medical foods, such as coverage inequalities and their resulting economic impact through its partnership with sister organization, Children's Magic U.S. So let's start with how you can tell what type of insurance plan you have. And this is critically important. I'll explain why in just a moment. If you are privately insured, not on Medicare or Medicaid, you are on one of two types of plans a group plan or a self-insured plan. A group plan is one in which multiple different companies band together to receive lower health insurance premiums. Although the name says group plan, it's a little bit misleading as if you have a plan purchased through the Affordable Care Act that you bought on your own, you also fall into this group category. A self-insured plan, on the other hand, is one in which your employer, the employer through which you have insurance, purchases insurance on its own. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important because if you are on a self-insured plan, one, even if there is a state mandate requiring that insurance companies pay medical nutrition, it does not apply to self-insured plans. But more importantly, if you're on a self-insured plan, your company who purchased the plan has the authority to authorize an exception. That means that you will appeal the decision to them and ask that they amend the policy that they have purchased. In many instances, an employer will buy an insurance plan not realizing that it doesn't cover medical nutrition, or medical nutrition never came up because the insurer didn't realize that somebody in their employee would need it. Consequently, in many cases, if you go to your employer, you explain the situation, they will make an exception and include it in their plan. If your insurance is part of a group plan, however, and you need to appeal, then that appeal would be sent to the insurance company and they would determine if your appeal is granted or denied. Step one, will your insurance cover medical foods? Well, that's a good question. It depends on where you live and who your insurance company is. Unfortunately, there is at this time no national insurance coverage mandate, and even if there were an insurance coverage mandate, it would not cover individuals on self-insured plans. Insurance varies dramatically state to state. The states have the determination of what they're going to do and what they're going to require insurance companies to do. Now, just because your state does not have a mandate, it doesn't mean that your insurance company doesn't cover it, you should still ask, but it means that they don't have to. Some state mandates also that are in effect only cover inborn errors of metabolism or have age limits or coverage caps, and most have no mandate. However, even if your state does not mandate insurance coverage and your insurance denies your claim, you can and absolutely should still appeal the ruling. Often, a positive resolution and full or partial coverage can be obtained. Coverage states. So, which states in the country have coverage? At present, there are 20 states in the U.S. that do have some type of coverage mandated for medical nutrition in place. Those states include Arizona, Colorado, Kentucky, Connecticut, Illinois, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, New Hampshire, New Jersey, and New York, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Dakota, Texas, and Washington. Not all of those states, however, will cover an FPI's child. For complete information on each state's coverage and the links to individual state legislation, 
as well as those states that do specify FPI's coverage, you can visit us on cmnua.org front slash coverage hyphen facts front slash FPI's. So you've been denied, your insurance company says no, they're not going to cover your medical nutrition, you want to appeal. Well, for starters, what is an appeal? Simply stated, an insurance appeal is a written, emphasis on the word written, request submitted to the insurance company involved by the patient, the patient's appointed representative, or in some cases, the patient's doctor, to have a decision of denial for drugs and or treatment overturned. This is where it is so important for you to get your doctor involved. I know many of you will have a pediatrician, perhaps a pediatric gastro, and an allergist involved. Find the doctor that you believe is going to be your strongest, best advocate and have them lead the charge for you. During the appeals process, your doctor will more than likely need to write a letter of medical necessity and answer any questions from your insurance provider. Your doctor can and should be your biggest advocate. So make sure from day one they are on board and that they are going to help you through this process. So how do you appeal your insurance's decision? Well, there's a great resource out there. I strongly encourage you to reach out to the Patient Advocate Foundation. Their link is provided on the slide. PAF case managers assist patients with the appeals process, which can be lengthy and it can be a little bit confusing. They can work with you to provide any and all necessary information to convince the insurance company to change their decision and provide coverage. Also, you have another resource out there that I strongly encourage you to use and that is the manufacturer of the medical nutrition that you or your child is using. In many cases, these companies have resources to assist patients in filing insurance appeals. I know the big three, Abbott, Nestle, and Nutrition do, and they are very good at getting positive results. Often medical foods manufacturers will walk through the process, assist with letter writing, and contacting your insurer with you and for you. Step two, government assistance. Both WIC and Medicaid cover medical foods if you qualify. The eligibility qualifications, like the laws, however, vary by state. So we suggest that you check your eligibility for WIC. The link is up online at fns.usda.gov front slash WIC. I also suggest that you look into Medicaid. Each state sets its own Medicaid eligibility guidelines. Yes, Medicaid is geared toward individuals with low incomes, but eligibility is also dependent on meeting other requirements involving age, pregnancy status, disability status, or other assets and citizenship. So please, check your eligibility. There's been more than one instance where I have spoken with someone who thought they were going to be just over the line and weren't going to qualify for Medicaid, but it turned out they actually did. Again, when working with Medicaid, the resource I mentioned earlier, the Patient Advocate Foundation, has great management staff to help patients with Medicaid relation related needs, including education on eligibility and the application process. And you can also get more information on the application process at Medicaid.gov. There are other types of assistance. This is step three. Most private sources of assistance require, however, that you have gone through steps one and two and that you've exhausted all of your other options first, government and insurance. All three major medical manufacturers, as I noted, Abbott, Nestle, and Nutritia, have some type of medical foods assistance program available. Some also have programs that will help you appeal an insurance denial. And then lastly, there is the Children's Medical Nutrition Alliance Fund for Food and Families. I will go through all three of the medical foods manufacturers programs and then ours for you. So the Abbott Patient Assistance Program. Multiple products are included in this program, not just amino acid-based formulas, but also formulas like Pediasure. Um, patients must all be U.S. residents and have no health care insurance coverage for the requested product. Patients must have no access to other external sources of funding or coverage. And for the Abbott Program, the patient must use formula for 100% of their caloric need. This is where your doctor is going to become so vital to your quest for getting low or no cost medical nutrition. There will be a form, your doctor will have to say what percentage of your child's caloric need this formula meets. That does not mean that if your child has one or two safe foods, 
that you're not going to be able to be in this program. If your doctor deems that those aren't foods that are going to meet appropriate caloric needs for them to grow and develop health in a healthy way, they, it is up to their discretion what part of caloric need they put on the form. So make sure that your doctor is clear, make sure that you give the doctor the form and that they understand that 100% of caloric need needs to be met. In terms of decision time frame, it is unstated, but typically Abbott gets back to patients within a week. With respect to limits, Abbott sets no limit on the amount of formula they will provide. They determine it on a case-by-case -case basis. And if you are approved, the product is distributed at no cost to the patient or their family. If you're interested, you can check out their website and their pathway reimbursement program. The link is on the slide. Next up is Nestle and Nestle's Healthcare Patient Assistance Program. Nestle covers both infant and junior for formulas for tube and oral feeding. They base eligibility on similar characteristics. You must have no prescription coverage for the requested product. The patient must use a formula for 100% of caloric need and they base determination and eligibility on a calculator that uses federal poverty level, which is approximately $24,400 per year for a family of four at this time. Now their decision turnaround time is about two days, 48 hours, and they will provide up to 12 cases of formula per year if you qualify. Lastly, we have Nutricia and the Neocate Assistance Program. Nutricia does limit the eligibility to infant formulas only for their program. Again, patients must be U.S. residents, have no health care insurance coverage for the product requested. Patients must have no access to other external sources of funding or coverage. But in Nutricia's case, there is no restriction placed on the percentage of caloric need. So whether it's 5%, 20%, or 100%, that doesn't automatically include or exclude you from eligibility for their program. Decision time for Nutricia, once all of the paperwork is filed, is usually within a week. However, with Nutricia, through their Navigator program, they do work with families to appeal insurance rulings prior to approval, and they do approve reduced cost formula for families that do not meet eligibility requirements for free formula. Again, as, as Nestle, uh, excuse me, as with Abbott, Nutricia determines on a case-by-case -case basis, but if approved, the product is distributed at no cost to the patient or the family and the link is there as well to go to the Neocate Assistance Program. Last but not least is CMNUA's Fund for Food and Families. Our Fund for Food and Families covers all elemental nutrition, so infant formula, junior formula, older formulas such as Splash, as well as Nutra, the product that Nutrition makes, which is like a cereal. Um, patients must be U.S. residents and have no health care insurance coverage for the requested product. Um, we do not have a restriction on percentage of caloric need whatsoever. And each applicant is reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. So for everyone who applies to this program, we take into account financial status, household, the number of children on medical nutrition, and the cost of living in your area. We do not base our determination on federal poverty level, and I want to stress that we don't even look at federal poverty level. What we look at is each individual family's ability to pay for the food that their child needs to remain healthy. Typically, we try to have a decision within 48 hours of a completed application. Again, I can't stress enough, we need a completed application. If you have any questions, please email us or call us, but we need the completed application before we can make a determination. Our limit on formula is up to 10 cases of formula per year. We can also do related medical expenses as they relate to traveling for medical procedures or testing. So if your child needs to travel out of the area and stay overnight to do testing at a hospital someplace else, and there is a Ronald McDonald House, we can cover a hotel for you and your child for the night to make sure that you are there with your child during the testing. We can also cover diapers for children who have an allergy and need a specific type of diaper to help with that. Um, and these are, again, determined on a case-by-case -case basis by CMNUA staff. If approved, as with the medical food manufacturers programs, product is distributed at no cost to the patient or their family. So to sum up, I know that it can be very confusing trying to navigate getting medical nutrition covered. It's very hard to navigate on some instances getting an approval when you've had a denial. But don't give up hope. Don't stop being tenacious. It's really important that you persevere, that you use the resources we provided 
talk with patient advocates, talk with your medical foods manufacturer, make sure you get your doctor involved, and absolutely appeal, appeal, appeal. If those appeals don't work, you have some great avenues to get assistance with medical nutrition through the medical manu food manufacturers and through CMNUA. Please keep in touch with us moving forward. Our sister organization, Children's Magic, will be lobbying to change laws in some states next year, and we will be keeping those on our newsletter abreast of that fight. We also will be letting you know the latest and greatest, what we're doing and what's going on in the FPIES world. So visit us at cmnua.org and follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. And if we can be of further assistance, please feel free to contact us. My email is kchildress at cmnua.org, or you can contact our program manager, Lisa Endress. Hers is lendress at cmnua.org. Thank you all so much.